What's up guys? Welcome back. Today I am going to show you all how to change out a 3.5 gallon, just do a complete water change, gravel, plants, water, and all that. And I'm just going to show you all. And by the way, I'm not bald. I just had last night, I just shaved it down to a number three and a number one on the side. So I'm not bald. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so first off for the fish, what I'm going to do is I have a little bag right here and uh, at my Petco at least, you go and you get the little dog foods, you know, the little dog food bar. They have aquatic bags there and I have gotten a few bags like that and I've also, usually though, like, for instance, I got this one from just uh, buying fish, and I try to save them. That's why it's kind of all wrinkly. But I know this is watertight, so first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to crinkle it up. About like that. Make it kind of... About like that. And then I already got me a measuring cup. It doesn't have to be an exact, you know, ounce or whatever. You can kind of, how to put it, you can kind of eyeball it. And I've already got the water changing in the tank. Uh, but I don't have a problem with showing you all again. I already got it changing because I want to show you all more or less the uh, budget way, like the beginner way, so you don't have to buy a siphon and all that. So that's what I'm going to be showing you all. So, let me get a measuring cup and just slowly pour it in. As of right now, I'm on carpet, so I'm trying to be very careful and not spill any. So, yeah, for this size, 32 ounces will be fine. She has two quarry catfish and uh, two sword tails. But before y'all say that she's overstocking a 3.5 gallon, she is not because of her filter. She has a very, very good filter. And if y'all see this little thing, I'm propped up on the fish tank as we're speaking. And I'm just trying to make it a good angle because I forgot my tripod at my house. And I'm at my grandma's house right now, and she's she's uh, needing a water change on her little tank. But alrighty, I'll see y'all when I'm hopefully gonna catch a fish. Okay, guys, as you can see, I already like took out some of the water, and it's kind of getting a little dirty. But the way I did it was I have a little a bit of air tubing from. Her Paul Fly aerator, I love that thing. That thing was like 10 bucks, and it's lasted years. And it's perfect for a little tank, you know, or a quarantine or anything. I'll leave a link to that. That is an awesome tank. But anyways, I already have this going into a pot, and it's super easy. It's kind of gross, but you got to kind of, like... Get that and try to suck all the water just until it gets over this hump to where, like, right about there. And you stop. You won't get water in your mouth usually. And you stop and you won't get any water in your mouth. And But you better put, it away, put your mouth away from it quick because it will start dripping pretty good. As you can see, I got a little steady flow. And let me... Actually, let me take this pot, let me go dump it, and then I'll get back with y'all and see how I can set it up where y'all can see me catching the fish. Okay, guys, so I lied to you. I'm going to show y'all I'm not going to catch a fish quite yet. I am... Here, no, hold on. Okay, no, I lied to y'all again. Let me put this up real quick. Let me go try to catch these fish, then I'll start. Uh, showing y'all how to get the water flowing real nice. Let's see if I can't set y'all up to where y'all can see. Okay, guys. So, 
I also have this little net right here. Just a, <clears throat> a, I think it was a net from one of my past videos where I got that Walmart uh, starter kit deal. I think it's the same net. I have no idea. It's just a tiny little net. Uh, nothing fancy at all. This is 3.5 gallons, not a huge aquarium at all. But I'm still having trouble trying to catch these sword tails. And okay, I can't catch these as quick as I thought. So y'all saw me kind of rumble around with them a little bit. So I am going to cut it right in here and I will get back to you when the whole bagging process, right? Okay guys, so this Cory right there, the only Cory in the bag, is pregnant. I just found out it was always like the bigger Cory and then I finally like got it out the tank and looked at it. I felt it to belly and like a few eggs and whatnot. So we might have some baby Cory Corys on our hands. But I still haven't gotten the other Cory. I'll get back to y'all when I have to bag all these guys up. Okay, guys. So we got them all bagged up. And if you look down in there, the big Cory versus the little Cory, you can see how much wider that one is. It's a very early pregnancy, but it'll still probably be a few months. But we'll still be able to have little babies. I can't focus through the stuff. But anyways... I am going to show y'all how to bag this up properly, and oh, let me find a, another sand. It's bugging me so much not having a tripod. Okay, guys, so y'all can somewhat see this, and if y'all ask why I'm putting them in bags, it makes it easier for the acclimation process, and even though I did find out this had a hole in it, it's still fine. I put it in this little measuring cup deal so it wouldn't leak everywhere so it's fairly easy you kind of cup it like this and fold it over your hands that's why i made it kind of make it a mushroom more or less like this and and when you do one little puff that doesn't put co2 in there it just puts or whatever we breathe out, it just puts off mostly nitrogen and that little bit of oxygen in the air. It just does that because when it's short breaths, it just pushes the air. It doesn't use our air when it's short breaths. So, it's not bad for the fish and they can still breathe. Then you just kind of do a little bit of a some people call it a square knot, some people call it a granny knot. Whatever kind of knot you can make, more or less. It doesn't have to be watertight, just where it doesn't fall over, more or less. And the leak. There we go. So, I'm just doing a simple little granny slash square knot. As you can see, it's not the best job because there's a leak on the bottom right here. But it'll be it'll be fine just to keep the fish in for now. And let me show y'all how I am going to uh, filter out the or not filter out change all the water. So like I showed y'all, I have this little bit of tubing, and you just kind of stick it in there and let me set y'all back up so i can do this okay you guys i've got y'all set back up so you just, and you try to wash that water and as soon as it gets over that hump you can stop and just put it as low as you can possibly go while still having that at the bottom There we go. We got a steady little stream in there. There we go. That all. That's all. It is really. That's all that it is to it.
you just get a little airline tubing. Usually I use the uh, longer piece because I also have this for my, you know, check valve and all that. And like I said, this Pawfly <laughs> aerator, this is an awesome aerator. It's not like good for huge tanks. Um, I first bought it for my second to first tank. Sorry about that little table right here. But y'all got to deal with it because <laughs> I'm not the best YouTuber. <laughs> but anyway, this little paw fly aerator. And it is just, it is insane. It's 10 bucks, really. And it's, I mean, to some people, 10 bucks is a lot. And I get that. But at the same time, uh, you can stretch that to like 12 bucks and you can have two five gallons perfectly aerated you know just get a little tea you know this comes with tubing an air stone and a check valve you know it comes with like 10 feet of tubing uh, a check valve and an air stone which is a very nice air stone I love it it doesn't chip all the time when I drop it because I have a problems with dropping all my air stones and like I had a huge one like this long it was expensive it was like 20 bucks and for an air stone and I was like you know what I gotta get this I gotta get this you know it'd be so cool looking and on our way back to the car I dropped the bag and it shattered into three pieces <laughs> so not not my best moments but as you can see it's just slowly filling up you know, this is your time. You know, you can sit there and do whatever you need to. I'm in the my grandma's living room right now because she's really nice and she lets me film all kinds of little videos and all that. And so I'm going to turn on TV, watch some YouTube, Netflix, whatever. And I'm just going to watch the pot, you know, every five minutes. I'm going to get up and try to look at the pot and see how filled it is and it's pretty much all there is to it I will get back to y'all once most of it is drained out and it's time to clean the gravel and the plants and also please if anyone knows how to like how to, put it, how to get rid of these snails like this is just like a little tiny bit of there's more snails and gravel in this. Like, seriously, one just fell on me. There's way too many snails. Can y'all please comment below on how to get rid of those, please? Because <laughs> I have no idea. I've been just trying so hard trying to get rid of these snails. I had a really bad problem with my 29 gallon, but then I ended up putting a goldfish in there. And I don't feel safe putting a goldfish in this small of a aquarium just yet you know even though it does have very very good filtration I still don't feel quite safe putting a goldfish in there so if y'all have any other ideas on how to get rid of these please comment down below we'll get back to y'all when this is filled or no that's drained and I will get back to y'all and then I will show y'all how to clean out the gravel because this tank from what I know it's six months old it's never had its gravel cleaned like besides a like a little gravel bag deal you know never had its like gravel taken out and cleaned so I will see y'all next clip and hopefully uh, nothing goes wrong <laughs> okay guys so it took me a while to drain all the water but getting the gravel you can do it many ways you can use like just a shovel you can use like a little gardening shovel it's kind of self-explanatory and you get like a ziploc or something like that and bag it up and then what you do you get like a little ice pick or a thumbtack works really well whatever just to us for small holes and try to make the smallest holes you can especially if you have 
smaller gravel like this. So you just kind of poke holes through it. Turn on your water. Get your little, I forgot what you call this. And just spray it. And you keep spraying it until it fills up and lets it drain. Fills up, lets it drain. Fills up and lets it drain again. Just to make sure that all that bad stuff gets out. That's how I clean my gravel when I first get it too. To get all the like chemicals and dust off of it. And this is the best way I can find to clean the gravel, you know, somewhat easily. And I mean, uh, it's a real easy way to clean gravel. And I will get back to y'all when I am cleaning the plants. Okay guys, so you get your plants. Actually, I found this one. It was a pack of five of them for a dollar twenty-five at my local Crazy Dollar. I don't know if that's just like a South Texas thing or what, but <laughs> hey, I saw this. It looked kind of bad. Uh, it smelled really weird, but I went home. I bleached it. I did everything I could. Sterilized it. It works fine. It looks pretty cool. So, hey. I got it, so what I want you to do is get your little nozzle deal and just spray it. You wanna just try to make sure you know you don't go overboard, but you know just feel it, you know, wash everything, make sure it looks good. And if there's an algae problem on it, you ought to put it in bleach or uh, take the plants out, your fake, this is also obviously fake plants. Uh, you take your plants out and you just kind of uh, lay it out in the sun for a little bit. Uh, bleaching probably works the best, but if you don't have any bleach, you can lay it out in the sun for about two days and it'll get rid of all the algae and whatnot on the plants. And Right about here, that should be good. So, I will get back to y'all when I'm officially done and I, the water is in the tank and all that. Bye. Okay, guys, so I got everything all cleaned and the water is filled up, the filter is running, got the aerating stone in. It is all looking good and it is just looking. A lot better it's still very cloudy just because I just put in the water and I just put in the dechlorinator so it's still looking very cloudy but still considering it looks very good and I'm probably gonna in the video right here I'm gonna clean the acrylic on it make it all nice and shiny and I will see y'all who knows within this week hopefully I've been not really on my schedule. I've been posting more than my schedule. So I'll see you all next time.